Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Tour. So as you guys know, if you're watching this video live, I'm currently on a military deployment and I don't have access to all the new stuff such as Vega GPUs, Coffee Lake, Nvidia Volta, blah, blah, blah. So today we're gonna take a look at the eight year old GTS 250. So let's get into it. The Nvidia GTS 250 was released all the way back in 2009 at a price range of 130 US dollars for the 512 megabyte version and 150 dollars for the one gigabyte. Nvidia specifically released the GTS 250 to combat the Radeon HD 4850. This graphics card can only support games up to DirectX 10, more on that later, and the version I have here only has half a gig of VRAM, so we're definitely going to be limited. Now I don't want to just keep boring you guys on the specifics of this card as I know you probably just want to see the benchmarks but the only thing I want to mention is that this is basically just a rebrand of Nvidia 9800 GTX Plus. There are a few differences between the two, very slight differences mind you, but at the time Nvidia was completely screwing up their naming convention much like they did recently with the Titan X, XP or whatever it was, but yeah basically just a 9800 GTX Plus. At the time of creating this video I did a quick eBay search and found this exact 512 megabyte EVGA model on sale for only 12 bucks. At 12 bucks this definitely had my attention even more, but there is a huge drawback with this card. The GTS 250 was released as a DirectX 10 card and as you guys know we're all the way up to DirectX 12 so most of the new games won't even open with this. Most of the eSport titles will actually run with this however, pretty decently mind you, but just know that some of the newer games like Player Unknown Battlegrounds, Dirt 4, things like that, they won't even open. Keep in mind that there might be some tricky ways to get around the DirectX requirements. I honestly have no idea, but out of the box, some of these newer titles definitely will not work. So for today's testing, I'm gonna be throwing the GTS 250 into my main gaming PC, which is obviously super overpowered for this graphics card. It's running an i7 4790K that boosts up to 4.4 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and an MSI Gaming 5 motherboard. Now, like I said, this testing platform is way overkill for this graphics card, but this way we'll be able to push this to its absolute limit because it will definitely be the bottleneck. The first game I tested was CSGO, much like every other benchmarking video. In 1080p with high settings and no anti-aliasing, I averaged a solid 105 FPS and it only dipped down to 71. The footage that you're seeing now definitely looks a little choppy, but that's only because I was recording footage at the same time. The results I show here on the right for this game and every other game are the results I got when just benchmarking and not recording. Just keep in mind that the game footage will look a little bit slower than the actual results. Next I fired up Dota 2 and we got some pretty good results again. In 1080p and with the graphics slider on the second notch from the left or the second fastest notch, I averaged 123 FPS. Now you definitely can tweak this to look a little bit better and get closer to that 60 FPS mark, but that's all personal preference. Rocket League was up next and in 1080p and high quality settings with a render detail of quality, I averaged 56 FPS and it did drop down to 30. This is really the only benchmark that surprised me with this card as I personally think the game looked really nice and I was right around 60 FPS the entire time. Now usually at this point in my benchmarking I would fire up Overwatch, but honestly I'm really enjoying Dirty Bomb as my first person hero shooter these days. In 1080p and low settings I averaged 86 6 FPS and stayed above 60 FPS the entire time. You definitely could crank this up to medium, but for my shooters, I like to stay above 60 FPS. And finally, the last game I tested out was GTA 5, and although this is mainly a CPU intensive game, it definitely pushed the GTS 250 to the limit. In 1080p and normal settings, which are the lowest by the way, I only averaged 31 FPS and it did tank to the 20s a lot. I would probably run this game in 720p if I actually wanted to play with this card, but here's the 1080p benchmark anyway. Well that wraps up my 8 year late review of the GTS 250. I actually did a similar video with the GTX 480 up here, so make sure you guys let me know in the comment section if you want to see more videos like this. Well hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel, and as always, thank you for watching, and please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.